Now this one is a 45 year old woman with a six centimeter intramuscular thigh mass. So this one I have a guess. Okay, what's your guess? Fibromyxoid. Very good. This is the this is the the mimic in name only because it doesn't really look anything like that tumor that we just looked at, right? This is this is a low grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, also known as Evans tumor, after Dr. Harry Evans, uh, a really famous soft tissue pathologist from MD Anderson, who first described this tumor in the 1980s. And I had the really great experience of getting to work with Dr. Evans a bit when I was a resident in Houston. And I, I remember one day sitting at the microscope and asking him to tell me the story about how he, you know, discovered this tumor. And, and he, a very modest and uh, kind of soft-spoken guy, and told me the story of how he saw these tumors that had uh, that had initially been thought to be benign. I think one of them was thought to be like a desmoid fibromatosis, and the other was thought to be a fibroma or a neurofibroma. But then, after they developed lung metastases, the patient sought care and uh, at a major center, and he ended up seeing seeing those. And, um, and recognizing that they represented an, an entity that had not yet been described. So really, it was a really cool experience for me to get to sit with Dr. Evans and hear the story of how he described, you know, the tumor that, that bears his name. So these tumors are, they sound alike with myxofibrosarcoma, but they don't really look alike. So I think one thing that helps me is myxofibrosarcoma that we just looked at is much more myxoid, more blue. So myxo comes first in the name. Fibromyxoid sarcoma usually are more fibrous than myxoid. Now, not always. There are some exceptions, but most of the time they look more pink and less blue because they're more fibrous. And fibro comes before myxo in the name for, for that reason. So or that's the, the way I remember it, at least. So these tumors are really unusual for a variety of reasons. Number one, they do not look malignant, usually. They are relatively low cellularity, very bland, uniform cells. They usually do not have very many mitoses. They usually do not have pleomorphism with some rare exceptions. They don't usually have necrosis, and yet they behave like a malignant tumor. So um, that's one unusual thing. The other unusual thing is that they have a tendency to recur or metastasize many, many years after they're diagnosed. So most, you know, High-grade sarcomas, if they metastasize, the metastasis often will happen within five years of diagnosis. Now, there are exceptions to that, but that's kind of a general rule that high-grade sarcomas metastasize relatively quickly. But this tumor, uh, I think the average, the, the mean time to metastasis or recurrence is around 15 years. So some, and some patients uh, have metastases or recurrence three or four decades after the original. I think the longest one that I've seen was about 30 30 years after their original diagnosis, they had a local recurrence, which is just wild and crazy. Like it's, it's so different from like almost any other kind of sarcoma or soft tissue tumor, really a very unique and unusual tumor. So it looks benign, but it's actually malignant. It has this very strange behavior pattern uh, where it can have very, very late recurrences or metastases. So the, um, the, uh, let me go back to low power. The two things that help me on low power is that this mixture of pink and blue, this mixture of fibrous collagenous areas, like here, with bluish myxoid areas that are alternating zones. And then the other thing is that there's alternating cellularity. There are areas that are a little bit more cellular, and then other areas that are kind of rarefied and have much less cellularity. And it never really gets super cell. I mean, this is compared to most of the, you know, sarcomas, this is much less cellular the whole tumor, but even so, there's like kind of low to medium cellularity and then very low cellularity. And sometimes you get zones kind of like this where, where it's like hyalinized collagen and you can have zones that are almost acellular looking. I don't know if this one has, has areas like that, but you can have very low cellularity areas in this, um, in this lesion. Oh, like here. See how this area is kind of wiped out. There's very few cells there. Um, the um, spindled areas here, Look, there's a little, a little waviness to that. So because of that, people often see kind of wavy and they think of nerve. And I like to point out that really wavy, like like this, that like is what I call the ramen noodle sign of Ed Fulton, after my former fellow Ed Fulton, who pointed out that when you have like tendon or fascia or ligament, dense regular connective tissue, the collagen bundles get very wavy. And he said that that looked kind of like ramen noodles when you pull them out of the package and they're dried. And I loved that, and I thought it was such a perfect explanation. And it's true. When you see really, really wavy collagen, that's more often going to be either a normal 
a, a collagenous fibroblastic structure like dense regular connective tissue, or in the setting of neoplasms, it's usually going to be a fibroblastic type of process. So um, neural tumors can sometimes have waviness, but I feel like um, non-neural fibroblastic tumors actually are often much more wavy with their collagen than, uh, than nerve tumors. But, but the point is, is that with these bland spindle cells, fine collagen, and some myxoid, bluish myxoid change, those are features that do resemble neurofibroma. So these tumors can get mistaken for neurofibroma. They can get confused with desmoid fibromatosis, although usually they're not quite as broad sweeping fascicles as desmoid tumors. I have a video on, on desmoid fibromatosis and neurofibromas also. I'll put links down below. Um, and then also they, um, because they look benign cytologically and they look like fibroblasts, you might be tempted to say, well, I don't know what this is, but I'll just call it a fibroma, not otherwise specified. Don't do that. That fibroma is a term that I do not personally use in soft tissue pathology unless it's a specific type of fibroma, like desmoplastic fibroma or, um, or uh, other types of fibromas that are named. There are some in oral pathology. And in, in the GYN tract, I know there's some fibromas, and I'll leave that to gynecologic pathologists to, to debate over uh, and, and talk about proper naming. But in soft tissue, I don't say, well, I'm not sure what it is. I'll just call it fibroma because that's how things like this can get missed. And uh, a really great pearl that one of my mentors, Dr. J. Rowe, taught me in residency is that if you think something is, if something is a neoplasm, and you think it's benign, but you don't know a name for it, don't just sign it out as benign, not otherwise specified. Go and show it to someone and get, get some expert consultation because there are times in pretty much every organ system that there are things that look benign and don't have obvious malignant features, but based on their specific pattern are actually malignant. And so you would never recognize them by the usual rules unless, and so experts in the field will know those things. So another example in soft tissue is like myxoid liposarcoma. It also doesn't look malignant particularly. It looks benign by all the rules we would teach a first year resident, but it's the pattern of knowing, oh, those vessels and that myxoid background and those little tiny lipoblasts, this is a myxoid liposarcoma. So I think that's an important rule that, you know, don't just call something benign. I don't know what it is. Malignant is a little different. You can say this is high grade malignant and I'm not sure what it is because once you say it's malignant, then that's going to initiate a chain of events that even if you're not sure what it is, it's going to get the patient's going to get further work up. They'll get the pathology reviewed. But once you call it benign, no one else is going to look at the case, right? They're going to tell the patient it's all good. Don't worry. And that's when, you know, problems can potentially develop there. So I thought that was a really great lesson from Dr. Rowe. But there, this is that intermingled pink and blue. And then also, this is a subtlety, but look at the collagen. The collagen bundles are, they're so fine, like little thin threads. And they have pale space between because they're kind of, um, suffu there's diffusion of mixoid background ground substance in between these little thread-like collagen fibers. And it's a, it's a subtlety, but I feel like this is a very characteristic thing that I see in most cases of low-grade fiber mixoid sarcoma that is this very, very delicate, very thin thread-like collagen with a little bit of mixoid in the background. That is a, a, a pretty characteristic feature, I think. And then sometimes also they have a unique vascular pattern. Like this one, I think, has some, some kind of curved little, little loops of vessels. You don't always see this, but um, one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Mark Edgar, said that, you know, they kind of, some of them will have like hairpin turns. They'll like go and then turn right back around the vessel. So I feel like the, the vessels sometimes have a unique pattern in these, although I've not found that to be present in every case. So the, uh, oh, the, the other point I wanted to make before moving on is that part of the reason all the cells are very uniform without pleomorphism. Very good, because there's a fusion. Yes, sir. That's right. Many. Yes. Absolutely. Very good. This is a fusion sarcoma and it's a fus creb. 3L2 or 3L1 are the two fusion partners. And um, so you can test for it molecularly, or you can also use an immunohistochemistry for MUC4, MUC4, which is a pretty great marker for this and is a, a very sensitive and relatively specific marker. So when it looks classic like this and MUC4 is positive, then I feel comfortable signing it out without molecular. But if you have any, any doubts, molecular can, can help solve the problem. Um, and so the, this is true of, of many different translocation associated or, or gene fusion driven sarcomas that they tend to have monotonous uniform nuclei rather than pleomorphism. Pleomorphism usually is a sign of random chromosomal gains and losses or aneuploidy. 
And whereas in when you have a, a gene fusion, that's the same genetic abnormality in every cell in the tumor unless it acquires more mutations or something later. And so every nucleus looks the same because they have the same exact genetic problem. That's the kind of simplified way that I like to think of it. And it's true if you think about synovial sarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, and myxoid liposarcoma, and on and on, all of those tumors that have fusions, they tend to have monotonous nuclei, not pleomorphous. And there are some exceptions to that rule, but in general, it holds up. And that's yet another amazing pearl that Mark Edgar taught me. And I remember like in fellowship when he said that, and I was like, whoa, it was like a light bulb. I thought no one had ever, I had never like been told that or never, never realized that. And it works so well. Um, so I really like that. So this is a very, very good example of low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. And, um, they usually are in deep soft tissue, but they can occasionally be um, uh, seen in the skin as smaller lesions. And when they're when they're in the skin, they see, that seems to happen more often in kids, um, based on what we know so far. And there's some thought that those tumors that are small and superficial may have a better prognosis um, overall. But but you know because of the very long disease course, I think it will still take a lot more time for us to really fully um, sort that out. So low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. Important to keep in your differential when you see a bland fibroblastic looking lesion that has some myxoid change um, to make sure that you don't miss these because they otherwise don't look malignant. All right. Excellent work. Hollow. Okay.